What's the word, y'all? NBA preseason is here. I am super excited. I'm be honest with you. For some reason, every single year, for the last, I think, three to four years, League Pass has not worked for me on preseason. Like, I'll log into my account, and it'll say error. And I'll change the password, it'll say error. So because of that, I haven't been able to deep dive into preseason, which is probably a good thing. You probably shouldn't be deep diving into preseason because you're going to have videos like this where you overreact into the highest degree. But I still wanted to talk about the things that I saw, whether it be from watching highlights or whether it be from me seeing a single player and, and going to watch their individual highlights because there are some great YouTube channels out there that, that focus on one player, the good and the bad. Shout out to them. Um, I want to overreact. Yeah. Everything I said in this video is not my 100% opinion going into the real regular season, but let's act like these first few days of the preseason is the real deal, all right? And I'm, I'm gonna keep it a buck. If it wasn't for the Bulls absolutely dominating last night, maybe I don't make this video. Maybe we talking about something else. But since my boys went out there and looked amazing, I'm here to talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, it was an absolute blast. Now, I was there, and people in my mentors was like, yo, Kenny, you decided to go to a random preseason game? over the the uh, American League wild card game and I was like yeah I was keeping track of the wild card game I was you know what I'm saying but like it's been so long since I have been extremely hyped for the Chicago Bulls I feel like the last couple years my hype has gone up and up and up but this year was a little bit different um and I wanted to be there for DeMar DeRozan's first bucket for Alex Caruso Lonzo Ball's first bucket on the team and I was there for that and it was not a lot of people there because it's a preseason game and nobody wants to waste their money on a preseason, but it felt like a real game because the, the, the crowd was into it because it was a big time moment. For as long as y'all know me, the Chicago Bulls have been bad. And I said this on my podcast, I don't even know how I'm going to be if the Bulls are actually good. You know what I'm saying? As long as y'all know me, I've been an objective, unbiased Bulls fan. I don't know if that's going to stay the same if the Bulls are actually nice. I'm being honest. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to go out and be the Bulls in four, Bulls in four, for every, but you get what I'm saying. I don't even know how to how to comprehend the fact that the Bulls might be okay. Now, again, it's preseason and they were going against the Cavs. But still, one of the biggest question marks about this team, or I guess there's two big question marks about this team that we saw glimpses of yesterday. How long would it take for this team to jail? Um, there are only three players on this roster that were here at the beginning of last season. Three, which means that there's at least 12 roster spots that haven't been here for it for the last eight months. That's huge. That's a crazy amount of turnaround in one individual season. And what I saw yesterday is that these boys are like they've been hooping together for a very long time. That's one. And the second thing had to deal with the defense. Again, it's the Cavaliers, and they're still trying to figure themselves out as well. But the defense looked amazing. Um, I knew Lonzo Ball was a really good defender, but I didn't understand to this capacity. You know, he was everywhere. He was guarding bigs. He was in the passing lanes. He was getting blocks. Javante Green, who I, I, I expected that he was going to get some type of run this season, but I didn't expect him to look as good as what he did. He was everywhere. I sat right behind the Bulls bench, and Derrick Jones Jr. is out with an injury right now. First of all, he had a wrist watch that was ridiculous. It was iced out. I was like, bro, bro stop, stop you, my eyes. And anytime Vontae did anything, uh, first of all, they called him Wu. Wu was his nickname, so I'm going with that for the rest of his Bulls career. Whenever Wu did anything, uh, um... Derrick Jones was like, that's my 6 foot center. And that's what he was playing like. He was guarding seven footers with no problem. Um, the seven footers on the Cavs, maybe not as big of a force as some of the other seven footers in the league. Like Larry Markin is not banging down there. Um, um, Evan Mobley is this thin frame rookie. He's not down there banging like that. But Javante held his own against those players. And I think that's going to be good enough to have him get some real rotational minutes. And he hit his shots. Oh, and he dunked on. So, you know what I'm saying? So, Vontae, big part of it. I knew that uh, Trey Brown Jr. spent a lot of time in the gym taking uh, taking care of his jump shot, and you saw part of that. But overall, the team just looked good together. And, and the thing that I was not prepared for, even though I knew it was going to happen to some extent, is the amount of highlights that came out about this Bulls team just from game number one. We signed Alex Caruso, who's one of the biggest highlight players when it comes to House of Highlights and all these places. Lonzo Ball is always going to be a fan favorite, whether he's really good or really bad. So the amount of highlights I saw about this game, about this team yesterday, is something I wasn't really prepared for. Um... Like, if you go to the NBA.com's YouTube channel or House of Highlights, the most amount of viewed videos from yesterday, even though I think there's like six games on or something like that, all of them were Chicago Bulls related. So, um, there's hype behind this team because we have some fan favorites across the league. And I just want to show y'all some of these moments. Please don't copy strike me, NBA. You see who my cursor is? There is a guy there with a flannel on right here. That's me. Right? You see me? Uh, I did the uh. Okay, so you see that, right? 
Now, when we get to the real, real highlights, yeah, they got they got one of the real highlights right here. Watch, watch me over here, bro. You, the amount of times I stood on my feet in this game was ridiculous, bro. I was hyped. I ain't never been this hyped. Alex Caruso came off the bench and gave us a double double with assists. He was out there playmaking. Oh, look, look, look. Zoe goes up. I mean, uh, 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 Zach Levine goes up, and so do I. I. Like, it was it was crazy. Now, do I expect us to win an NBA championship? I don't. Do I expect us to be fun, competent, and good? Yes. And that's all I really want. The next thing I want to overreact to or react to are the Houston Rockets. But more specifically, forget the whole team. The backcourt of Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. Now, Jalen Green did not have a good shooting night. He was 4 for 14. And I already saw some people making fun of the fact that when they came back in this game, Jalen Green was on the bench. Who cares? I want to talk about them specifically because boy, oh boy, oh boy. I've been trying since I watched the highlights. Again, I ain't watched the full game because I was at my game myself. But I was trying to, to try to think about a team that this reminded me of. And the only thing that came to mind, and I don't, I don't want people to, to take this out of context because I, I need to really break this down. It reminded me of the early 2010 OKC Thunder. Now, I know that the early 2010 OKC Thunder had Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and they went on to a finals appearance. They were in the conference finals and all. They were a very, very successful team. I don't mean about overall team success because I do believe the Houston Rockets are probably going to win 30 games in a year. They're going to be fun doing it, but they're going to only win like 30 games a year. I don't mean as far as success go. But when I was younger and, and when the, this OKC team was coming up, I was in 7th, 8th grade, freshman year of high school, sophomore year of high school. And one thing about this team where they were the most fun team in the NBA at the time. People that weren't necessarily huge shoes basketball fans um, were wearing OKC jerseys. No, not shirt jerseys. Jerseys, the shirts that say Westbrook on the back, but OKC. Things like that. Backpacks, jerseys, just repping OKC. And this is what the Houston Rocket team kind of remind me of. Now, not the team itself, but what I'm saying is that that front, that backcourt of, of Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green are going to be so fun that people are going to latch on to the Houston Rockets organization because of how fun that backcourt is. I don't think they're going to have the same level of success, especially not that early in their careers, but I'm just saying overall watchability and, and the way they can connect to the younger demographic, I think that those two players can absolutely do that. Now, the, the thing that's going to make it a little bit different is that OKC was young and good, so because of that, they were on national TV and stuff. Um, You're going to need League Pass to watch the Houston Rockets because I don't know if they have any um, full-time, like, mainstream TV games. Maybe when they go against Kay Cunningham because of the one-two overall pick. But I'm not, I don't expect them to have more than three uh, games on national TV. But that's what I'm trying to say. Those two players in the backcourt are, are going to remind people of that young fun, just based on fun factor. And I think that's crazy. Like, they got a lot of young fun players on the team. I saw somebody on Twitter call it, um, the first AAU team in NBA history because it's exact, that's exactly what it feels like. They have so many young players that are like highly touted young players, whether it be Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green, um, who who else in this team? Josh Christopher, uh, Kmar Jr. Like they have they have so many players. A uh, Shingoon, I guess, who was a highly touted, but looked really good in these these minutes. They just that's it. Does that make sense? Maybe not. It's overreaction, but you understand. Hopefully, I didn't know Singoon's um Singoon Singoon's playmaking was as good as it was out of that high post yesterday. Shout out to him. Um, overreaction again. Um, Josh Primo better than I expected. Now I watched summer league and saw he was hooping hooping. Um, but he had moments in this game against the Jazz where he was just coming. He was just shooting the ball. He's like, hey, I'm not getting a lot of PT right now, so let me show Greg Popovich that I deserve to have some PT. Um, I didn't expect anything going into his rookie season because he was the youngest player in the draft. But maybe he gets some PT and he makes the most out of it. Let me know what your overreactions are. Um, again, there are a lot of games that I didn't get to watch. But I, I hopefully my preseason will start working eventually. NBA, got they got to be better about this. They definitely do. Now, I know there are other ways to get around that. Wink, wink. Um, but I pay, for, I pay for league pass, bro. It should just work. Yeah, whatever. I'll see y'all tomorrow.